So if we hop onto AliExpress and we take a look at Cloudray's web store, we'll see that there are two main brands of fiber laser theta lenses. Which one do you buy? Does it matter? Yes, uh, there's quite a big difference between the two. And if you get the wrong one, you won't be able to use it in your machine. Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex over at Laser Everything and there's a lot going on here. If you are having trouble deciding what lens you need to buy for your laser, we're gonna cover it all. So don't go anywhere. We're gonna get into it right now. I was just getting ready to start the reshoot of the how to set up your fiber laser tutorial and I realized this topic is a little complex not crazy complex but it warranted its own video so I'm gonna make this video now and then we'll have the reshoot of the how to set up your fiber laser soon we're gonna start off today by talking about the differences between standard and OPEX theta lenses for fiber lasers if you already know the difference and you just want to know what size lens to get you can skip to the end because we're gonna cover that really quick it's really straightforward uh, but if you need to know the difference between the lens brands, stay here. So this is a fiber laser lens. This is a Theta lens. Um, they're really cool. If you take a look right there, you can see that they are primed and ready to go to uh, shoot our 1064 beams downrange at our items, okay? Um, they're, they're neat little pieces of technology, but they don't all look like this. This is your spacer. It's a standard fiber laser spacer and most fiber lasers have these. Um, when we place a standard theta lens into the spacer, you can see almost the entire lens disappears inside the spacer, okay? This is not true for OPEX lenses. OPEX lenses actually have the equivalent of a spacer on the outside already. And then the second part, that top part sticks out on the top like that i'm trying to reproduce it here so an opex lens almost looks like this okay and it's actually coming out of the top there with this gap already at the bottom if you try to put a standard fiber laser lens into an opex fitting the inside of your lens is going to hit your mirrors and that can cause some big problems so the first and probably the easiest way to tell the difference between a standard theta and an opex theta is how far is it going into the spacer if it goes all the way into the spacer, then you've probably got a standard lens. Uh, if it sits way out here like this and it has kind of a spacer built in, then it's probably an OPEX lens. There are a few other criteria that can help you tell the difference between the lenses. Standard fiber laser lenses don't often have easily accessible part numbers. They're not usually printed on the lenses or listed in the listings. If you can't find a part number on your lens and it matches the recession criteria for being a standard, it's probably a standard. If it does have a part number on it and that part number starts with JG, it's probably a standard. If it has a part number and the part number starts with SL, it's likely an OPEX lens. Another way you can tell OPEX lenses from standard lenses is that the OPEX lenses will literally have OPEX printed on them. I've seen exceptions to this, but it seems in the vast majority of cases, OPEX lenses are properly labeled OPEX on the side. So let's review real quick. Standard theta lenses fit almost entirely inside the spacer. They don't often have the part numbers printed on them, but when they do, they start with JG. OPEX lenses only fit a little bit into the spacer with a larger spacer gap built into them. They often have OPEX printed on the side, and even when they don't, their part numbers are clearly labeled, and the part number starts with the prefix SL. You wanna make sure you get the right Theta lens for your machine. It's hard to do returns on these, a lot of companies won't take them, and you might just be stuck with a worthless paperweight if you pick the wrong one. If you have a question about which lens your system takes, post a picture of the stock lens that came with your machine in the Discord and we can take a look at it and probably help you identify it. There's a link to the Discord in the description. The other thing I wanted to cover really quick with you guys was what size lens to buy for your machine. This is a 220 millimeter lens and this is a 110 millimeter lens. And those two ratings give you completely different work areas. You can do a pretty quick calculation in your head to convert millimeters to inches. It's not exact, but about 25 millimeters equals an inch. So the 110 millimeter lens is gonna give me about four inches of workspace where the 220 millimeter lens is gonna give me about eight inches. Now, we touch on this in the which fiber laser to buy video, and if you haven't already watched that, I'll put a card up here so that you can check that out. 
but the larger your work area, the more power it takes from your laser source to get the same effect. And that's because we're taking the same amount of energy and spreading it out over a larger area. 100% power on this 110 lens is going to be twice as strong as 100% power on the 220. For people with 20 watt fiber lasers, I recommend a two to four inch lens that's roughly 50 to 100 millimeters, somewhere in there. For people with 30 watts, you can go from a two inch lens all the way up to maybe an eight. You just eke some life out of the eight. I have a 30 watt laser and this does some stuff but it really is starting to lose a lot of power at 220 millimeters for people with 50 watt lasers you can order just about any lens you want uh, there are a few that are super big that the 50 may struggle with um, but for most of the lenses that are available on aliexpress's website are going to work excellent with your 50 watt laser so uh, you have a lot of options right there and that's one of the good reasons to get a 50 watt uh, you have a huge variety of workspaces at your disposal anyway guys thank you so much for watching this episode i hope you learned a thing or two about picking a fiber lens and telling the difference between standard lenses and opex lenses the difference is important and hopefully this will allow you to make an informed buying decision if you got value out of this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Let everybody else know the content is good. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you get notified the next time that we post a video. If you love the channel and it's the best thing that's ever happened to you, consider becoming a patron. Our Patreon subscribers get instant access to our entire fiber laser and CO2 laser libraries, and they help support the channel. So thank you so much to all of our Patreon supporters. If you'd like to become a patron, check out the link down in the description it's right next to the link to our discord our amazing laser community filled with people who are friendly and ready to help that know a lot about lasers it's just an amazing place to be and you can catch me on there literally almost every single day uh, so link to the discord down there right next to the link to the patreon thank you so much for watching this video i hope that it helped you learn a thing or two about lenses and uh, that's all i've got so i will see you in the next one If you're wondering what things look like through a fiber laser lens, this is it.